I'll continue the video where we left off last time. First, I wanted to give you an idea of why the mean absolute deviation shows the amount of spread in the data. Let's imagine here that I've asked four people how many children they have, and I got these four answers. And then I asked four other people how many children they have, and I got these four answers. And then I asked four other people how many children they have, and I got these four answers. We can see that this, we can see that these four answers have the lowest mean absolute deviation of one. We can see that these four answers have a higher mean absolute deviation of 1.5. We can see that these four answers have the highest mean absolute deviation of two. And let's think about why the, the mean absolute deviation is going up. We know that the mean absolute de deviation is just the mean of the absolute deviations. If you add the absolute deviations and divide by the number of absolute deviations, you get the mean absolute deviation. And each of the absolute deviations is just the distance from the data value to the mean. We can see that this data value of 4 is 1 away from the mean of 5 because it's 1 below 5. So the absolute de deviation is 1. We can see that this 4 is also 1 away from the mean of 5. So its absolute deviation is also 1. Each of these absolute deviations is just the distance from that data value to the mean. So the first absolute deviation is the distance from the first data value to the mean. The second absolute deviation is the distance from the second data value to the mean. The third absolute deviation is the distance from the third data value to the mean, and so on. And here, in this graph right here, we have the four data values. Each data value is shown with an x. So these are the two fours, and these are the two sixes. And each of these numbers is just the distance from the data value to the mean. This four is one away from the mean of five. This four is one away from the mean of five. This six is one away from the mean of five. And this 6 is also 1 from the mean of 5. So what we're seeing in here are the, the distances between each data value and the mean. And these four distances that we see in here are really just the four absolute deviations that we have here because the, the absolute deviations and the distances to the mean are the same thing. So when we calculate the mean or the average of the absolute deviations and we get the mean absolute deviation, we're really just getting the average distance to the mean. So we, get, we see right here that since uh, since all four data values are one away from the mean of five, the, um, the average of all of the distances to the mean is an average of one. Because if all of the distances are equal to one, then the average of those distances is just one. That's why the mean absolute deviation came out to one right here. You can see down here that these four answers are a little bit more spread out than these four answers because our first four that we had here has gone down to three. And our six down here at the bottom has gone up to seven. So this four has moved down to three and this six has moved up to seven. So we're starting to see more spread in this data set compared to in the first data set. And as we can see that as the data is getting more spread out, um, some of the absolute deviations are starting to get bigger because when this data value moved from four down to three, it moved from one 
one away from the mean to two away from the mean. This data value is now is now a three is now two away from the mean of five, which is why we see this distance of two right here. So since since this first data value is two away from the mean, it has an absolute deviation of two. And when this data value went from six up to seven, it moved from one away from the mean to two away from the mean. So the distance from this data value of seven to the mean of five is two. So since um, um, since now um, two of our data values are two away from the mean of five, it means that two of our absolute deviations have gone up to two. They used to all be one because up here every data value was one from the mean. But now as the data is getting more spread out, two of the data values are two away from the mean. And since two of our absolute deviations went up, it means that the, the mean of the absolute deviations also went up because um, the total, instead of coming out to 4, the total comes out to 6. So when you divide by 4, you get a bigger answer. You get 1.5 instead of just 1. So what we're seeing is that as the data is getting more spread out, the absolute deviations um, are getting larger because the, as, as the data gets more spread out, the numbers are getting further from the mean. So, and the distance, the distances to the mean are getting bigger. What about down here? The data is getting even more spread out because now we have a data value that's three away from the mean. We see this distance of three right here. And we have another data value that's also three from the mean. Because eight, this data value of eight is three from the mean of five. So this first data value of two is three from the mean of five. That's why its absolute deviation is three. And this data value of eight is three from the mean of five, so it has an absolute deviation of three. We can see that right here. The distance from eight to five is three. Um, and now we can see that the data values are getting even more spread out to the left and to the right. And as the data values are getting more spread out, the absolute deviations are getting bigger. And as the absolute deviations get bigger, the mean of the absolute deviations gets bigger. So basically, the mean absolute deviation is the mean or the, the average distance to the mean. And as the data gets more spread out, the, the data is getting further away from the mean. And the average distance to the mean is getting bigger. Basically, when the data gets more, when the data starts to get more spread out, the data is moving further away from the mean, which means that the average distance to the mean is getting bigger, which is why you get um, a larger mean absolute deviation when the data has more spread.